Hi, my name is Mary Jane. I'm with Hayes Sewing Machine Company in Wilmington, Delaware, and this is the latest episode in our creative video series. So today we will be making fun time balloons. So basically these are fabric balls that you make and you insert a helium balloon to make it fun. So to get started, we will need <coughs> the pattern. It's called Fun Time 10 Inch Fabric Balloon Ball Template Set. You will need... <laughs> that's, a, that's a tongue twister. <laughs> <laughs> you will need, of course, a balloon, um, uh, pins, rotary cutter, mat, marking pen, and a small ruler. The pattern comes, of course, with the directions, but also with two acrylic templates for your cutting. You need a third of a yard of fabric. These balloons, I feel like, could be used um, any kind of fun event or to keep the kids busy. <laughs> One of the things I was thinking about was it'd be really cute uh, for a wedding. So, oh, that would be. Yeah, or like a wedding shower. Yep. So I am um, using kind of a white and gold fabric for my cutting, and then I'm going to piece it with um, some cute batiks, which are very summery to me. So the first thing that you want to do is get your third of a yard, and you're going to press it, get all the wrinkles out. over here, give it a press on this side. Alright. The instructions tell you to fan fold it, meaning we're going to be cutting multiple layers. So if you fan fold it, it makes it easier to do that. Now for the quilters out there, this does not have to be cut directionally. So you don't have to worry about going selvage to selvage. You just cut it. So I'm going to line my template up. Get my nice sharp rotary cutter and cut through these six layers. to that side. All right, I'm going to flip it around. Line it up again. There's like a hiccup in that mat. I know. There you go. There we go. Just a, needs a little oomph this morning. All right, and let me not cut that way because I'll cut myself. Let me flip it and cut the proper way as to not cut myself. You could also at this point use a pair of scissors and just trim off that little end. I don't happen to have a pair of scissors handy. Um, top drawer. Top drawer? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at that. I know, it's like I put them there, huh? <laughs> like this is like a sewing shop. Okay, well, next time, Pam, a little <laughs> sharper. A little sharper scissors, <laughs> would you? Okay. I never said they were sharp. So you're going to have six pieces. One, two, three, four, five, six. Perfect. Okay, so far, so good. Then you have this template, which is the end of the, the um, beach balls. You need to cut out three. So, three. It's a surprise. It's a surprise. That's what you're watching the video for. <laughs> All the mysteries will be revealed. Three. Well, that's good to know. All right. Oh, I know why. Oh, I, you I just, don't know why. It's I a mystery. I just thought about it. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, okay. I thought that was the most clever part of it. All right. 
So there's two. I was going to say. <laughs> and then I didn't think that was three, but there you go. Yeah, here we go. These templates are actually kind of uh, quite nice. If I was making a lot of them, I would probably put a little handy grip on them. Oh, yeah, so it doesn't slip or do anything weird. Yeah. All right. So I have my three end pieces, and I have my six ball pieces. The next step is I'm going to take each piece, and the template has really nice notches in it, so you can mark where you want to start and stop sewing. I'm going to line that up. Yep, so it has a nice little hole in the center there. I'm going to take my red marking pen. These happen to iron off, but it's not going to matter. You just need to be able to see it. Yep. And you're going to have basically... You're going to have four, four on, on each piece. On the ovals. And you're going to have six on the ends. I just put my little marking pen in, make some doodads. All right, so you can see I have six there. They're a little light with this pen, and I have four here. And you're going to do that for each and every piece. Yes. Once I am done doing that, now I am ready to sew my pieces together. <clears throat> so I take, I have my markings on the outside. With this one, um, it's batik, so there, there isn't a right side and a wrong side, but I would be marking the wrong side because I want wrong sides together when I sew. Wrong sides together when you sew? I mean, I'm sorry, right sides <laughs> together when you sew. Jeez. All right. I'm going to put a pin here. It's not a straight one, but... And then I'm going to come over here, and I'm just going to, I don't know, every couple of inches, put a crooked pin in. It's better than stapling. Ooh, yeah, you're right. I don't want to do that. I want to do a little better with my pinning. I find sewing with curves is sometimes tricky. Um, I find that I just kind of gradually let the machine do some of the work. I don't sew quickly. I kind of just take my time, let the feed dogs do their thing. For this project, I am using a quarter inch foot with a guide because I like to kind of nestle it up. So I line it up. I make sure that I can see my dot. And that's where you're going to start. And that is where I'm going to start. Lower it back. There we go. Okay, I'm going to find my dot again. That's where I'm going to start. All right, you see I have it nestled up against my guide. I am going to tack it a couple times. And then I am going to start. And if I just take my time, I'm using a regular straight stitch, you'll find that the curve will kind of nestle against the guide. And I don't really need to stop and lift my presser foot to adjust. I just kind of go down following a quarter inch seam. If you're having problems getting a good um, seam with your curve, you can always lengthen your stitch a little bit. I believe I'm at a 2.5 right now. And then I tack the end. And voila. Nice. Now through the magic of television, dun, 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 dun. I actually have a the good piece. Done. Yeah. So, 
<clears throat> oh, and you're alternating on this one. I am alternating, giving it more of like a beach ball look. So now I'm going to sew the other two seams. So once you have sewn all the curves on the ball, you connect the last two pieces and you have something that looks like this. Now we're going to get ready to sew the end pieces. The instructions tell you that on the pieces that are two, so we had three end cuts, you put two of them together and you mark them leaving a hole in the middle. The directions say a one to one and a half inch um, opening. However, I really liked closer to a one and a half or more because this is where you pull the balloon through and one inch was just a little too tight. So I came in three quarters of an inch here and three quarters of an inch here, I think is what it ended up being. So you have basically two inches in the middle. Yep. Yep. You come to your sewing machine. You should change out your foot, but I'm not going to. <laughs> I sew you rebel you. Into the line. I back up a few stitches, come forward, sink my needle, raise my foot, flip around and come back. So that's nicely reinforced. Yes. When you do that on both sides, you're going to open it up. You're going to iron it. And what you're going to have is an opening. Nice. Ta-da! <laughs> An extra step that I added that was not in the directions was I did tack that down on both sides. That makes sense. It doesn't shift. So it doesn't shift. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So that's what we're looking at. So now we have two pieces to add to the balloon. Again, everything is marked with the dots. So you're going to go dot to dot and put a pin in. Now I kind of went back and forth as to whether I would sew off and um, for each corner or whether I would just stop and pivot. And in doing this a few times, I feel like stopping and pivoting um, is better. It gives you a little bit of a rounder look on the bottom, but I didn't mind that. Well, it's a balloon. I don't really... Yeah, but you know, sometimes beach balls, you really see the points at the bottom. I don't know. It, it's been so long since I, I've had a beach ball, I wouldn't. <laughs> I'll take your word for it. Six one, half dozen the other, right? <laughs> right, so now I have my ends pinned. Obviously, I need to get out more. Mm. <laughs> one more. Here we go. And my points are still lining up nicely. Okay, I can't use that bit, sorry. So this takes a little juggling and you know, because I'm a quilter, my seams are all gonna go the same way. I am still gonna use a quarter inch. So I'm lining dot to dot there have my foot raised, I line it up where my needle is, pull my needle out. Your pin? My pin out, you're right. That would be better. <laughs> I give it a little bit of a tacking stitch. I make sure that I am going from point to point and that I don't have anybody under extra fabric under yes. the foot. Only feel two layers? <laughs> yes, I only feel two layers, and then I go. Get to my next point, I stop. 
If I needed to, I would keep my needle down, but raise my presser foot. And then lower my presser foot again and do the next one. Making sure I only have two layers of fabric. Okay, raise my presser foot. You kind of know the drill. No problem, and you're basically going to do the same on the top oh. and the bottom. I'm going to do the same on the top and the bottom, exactly. All right, and we'll be right back. Okay, so I have finished sewing the um, hexagons to the bottom of the ball. You can see it's not the neatest work, but it's definitely attached. Now I have this opening. I pull the fabric. It's like a very strangely shaped pillow. Yeah, <laughs> I guess. Like I said, it is clever. And I have seen online that people have made larger templates to accommodate bigger balloons. Oh, there like, you go. Or smaller balloons. But we're sticking with the pattern template, which I believe is a 10 inch. So remember I was saying before that the when you left a small opening I found it really hard to get the fabric through so I did keep my opening a little bigger. Okay so nice yeah, it looks like a deflated beach ball. You get your balloon you put it in and then by far this is the hardest part <laughs> and you blow it up. Oh gosh let's see can I do it? I always knew she was full of hot air. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, shouldn't make her laugh. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> we'll be One right back. We'll be right back. Yeah, look at that. She hasn't passed out yet. She's doing really good. Okay. Nice. So you get it to a decent size. And then you tie it off. Then you tie it off. Look at that. Yeah, keep your fingers. Yeah. And then I just tuck it in. Nice. Ba -dump. That is wonderful. Isn't that clever? I really like that project. So this is our fun beach ball. So now I have a soccer one. I have this one. And I'll And you'll have a glitzy one. one. Yeah. And that's our video for today.